So in the last class, uh, we have seen the uh, concept of uh, how do you begin going about selection of actuators and sensors for a mechatronic system and uh, now we will just get uh, more familiarity developed into the concept of feedback. Uh, the sensors that we used in mechatronic systems are mainly for feedback. Now how do we process this feedback or sensor input to further drive the uh, control application or to get a desired kind of application going that is what we are going to see now uh, in, in the next part of the course. Uh, although this might be somewhat familiarity familiar to you, you know, uh, you have uh, already, some of you might have already seen uh, the feedback in the context of uh, you know your Mac course or any other automatic control fundamental course uh, it's important to like you know get a firm uh, grip on this concept of feedback so as to kind of uh, use it in uh, in the case of the systems that we have uh, not yet been exposed to for example these nonlinear systems or Lagrange formulation based systems or any um, you know, even linear systems but added with the nonlinearity of the friction or backlash. So in such cases how do you think about using like you know, the tools that you have learned already uh, say for example Laplace transform. Laplace transform if you say they will not be applicable because they are valid only for the linear systems case. So then how do you go about doing such a uh, analysis so that's where like you need this fundamental understanding of this concept of uh, feedback so that you can apply it uh, with the tool of this ordinary differential equation to many different kind of a um, systems I mean maybe it will not linear or non uh, linear or non linear and uh, get uh, to know what is a way you can think about in the case you are not uh, given um, that the system is linear and the tools in the linear domain what you have learned are, are probably not applicable. So let's uh, develop this understanding further now. Uh, if you see uh, what we are going to see is basically uh, the, the, the what is feedback. Uh, how do you kind of what is called as feedback and uh, open loop versus closed loop kind of a systems okay you may feel this is like a trivial thing but uh, nonetheless you should go through some part of it uh, or like you know make sure that all the parts of these uh, are understood so that uh, you can apply them in the cases of uh, you know, non-linear systems as well so uh, how do you process the feedback variable to achieve desired goal huh? that is another kind of a very um, what you say more like a design question okay so there are many different ways in which one can process feedback variable to achieve uh, what uh, goal that is given to you um, some part we uh, have already some kind of a feel based on our intuition or based on our common sense so to say uh, we know how do you process this uh, variable but um, uh, how do you convert that understanding into some sense of mathematics and uh, use it further uh, this is another question that we we need to bother about um, as we go along like you know we'll, we'll uh, start story unfolding uh, answers to these kind of questions okay uh, so now uh, Let's take an example, but before that, we need to be sure about like okay, given a plant, what are the inputs and outputs? You should be very sure about okay, oh, this is my input or this is my output. Based on input and output, like uh, the the kind of uh, you know development uh, of control and its properties may have a lot of uh, changes that will happen. 
and then establish relationship between input and output uh, which is which is what we saw I mean mathematical modeling will give you that and uh, once we have that relationship and uh, we know these inputs and outputs we are kind of more or less uh, ready to kind of delve into this uh, you know development of control algorithms okay and uh, there are several representations that can be possible for system uh, but right now we are going to look at mainly this ordinary differential equations kind of a uh, representation which is a most um, uh, you know fundamental form for the representation okay the state space transfer function they are valid only for the linear systems case for nonlinear systems you you may have a state representation of a system uh, that we'll consider later for uh, control development uh, in, a, in a different way but ordinary differential equations are the most uh, fundamental form of uh, representation that uh, one can use um, for analysis of uh, or propose any control and then do the analysis or synthesize the control based on the equations okay how do we do that we'll, we'll see soon Okay, so let's take this example of uh, a block lying on the, this is our standard example, uh, this block with mass m uh, on the surface, uh, uh, horizontal surface and uh, it is currently at this position and uh, it, uh, now this f is applied on the block. Okay, so let's assume for now that uh, there is no friction uh, between the block and the surface and uh, under such scenario we want to drive this block to the desired position shown okay so uh, what is the quantity of interest here quantity of interest is x okay the desired position so position is a quantity of our interest okay so x is a quantity of our interest which is uh, output and uh, quantity that you can dictate okay is input to the system is like force F. The so force F is uh, can be any value that we we want to apply. Of course, I mean when we talk of uh, mechatronic system, this F will have some certain saturation limit. But uh, right now, the theoretical discussion we consider okay, whatever value of F is desired, okay, uh, you, we are able to apply. Okay, uh, so this, this f is something that we want to dictate uh, in such a way that uh, we reach the final desired position. So we see first the relationship between input and output which is uh, you know standard f is equal to m x double dot and now under such relationship if we want to kind of pose this question uh, okay to take the mass to the desired position xt what should be the applied F? Hmm. So there are many solutions to this problem. Okay, one simple way, if uh, you remember, we had uh, done some kind of a uh, planning for the trajectory. If you recall, the trapezoidal plan for the trajectory. That okay, I'll I'll move, start moving uh, the block in along some kind of a trapezoidal trajectory, such that the final point of the trajectory is. Uh, is taking me to this desired position. Uh, mind this uh, desired trajectory, trajectory, trajectory is in the voltage. I mean, <laughs> is in the velocity, it's not voltage. It's in the velocity, x dot. Okay, so you plan x dot along the trapezoid such that you accelerate first, you move with a constant velocity, and then you decelerate, and you are reached in the final desired position with the velocity uh, in the final position zero. And we also begin with uh, zero velocity in the starting position. Okay, so if we plan such a trajectory, we get some x desired dot first, and then we get uh, we if you differentiate that, you'll get x desired double dot. So um, if you see along the tra like uh, trajectory trajectory, these are just uh, a pulse of uh, uh, acceleration. So you see trajectory trajectory velocity means. If you take a de derivative of this, then uh, initially the velocity, the, the derivative will be positive. Uh, it's a positive slope of the trapezoid, and then uh, for some time duration, whatever the time duration, then you apply zero x double dot, and then you apply 
like xdouble dot which is uh, uh, reverse okay so the, the, that's how that the, the deposit directory will uh, define the desired um, acceleration now if we know this desired acceleration xd double dot okay which now will be in terms of these pulses which are coming so uh, these two pulses okay one is for the beginning of the trapezoid uh, trapezoid trajectory and uh, which is positive pulse positive a, a, a x double dot and then at the end of the thing it is like a negative x double dot okay so uh, these two pulses are to be applied as f multiple like um, they, they'll be scaled by mass m and if you apply these pulses we hope that uh, with these the desired position would be reached okay so this is uh, this is one of the many kind of a uh, uh, trajectories of f that can take you to the final uh, desired position okay so this particular way of doing things where you are you are really not using any information about where i am at uh, at at the moment okay along the track if I, I there is no dependence of f at all on x it's directly function of x desired and x desired is what is i have planned okay so this is important to know that okay this f has no any kind of a dependencies on on x explicitly okay so uh, under such scenario this f will be an open loop control so can you see what is the problem with such a such a solution where you have just a open loop some kind of a force that is applied here i am not looking at what is my current uh, x uh, position and i am still up keeping on applying whatever f i have computed based on the knowledge of the system and i am hoping that uh, i'll be taken to the final position okay uh, so this is uh, is some kind of a open loop based control and we can immediately see that in the presence of friction or in the presence of some other disturbances that are there around here we may not be reaching the final position okay so that is a, is a is a issue with this kind of a solution that we have developed okay so now uh, the, then the question comes that uh, look here i mean i mentioned the same thing no feedback so we have not used the feedback of uh, our input uh, output variable x here okay so we would not know if we have really achieved the task okay uh, so we have given this input retrieve and forgotten about it and then now if we look okay oh, we find we are not at a desired position okay so then like you no know, we'll have to do something okay so we are not really looking at uh, whether we have achieved the final goal or not uh, in in real time so we need some sense of uh, you know current position and make use of the same uh, develop this uh, f to be applied so mathematically this question can be posed okay see say for example if you are given this kind of a scenario with your eyes open and you are saying okay oh, i want to you, you apply force whatever you uh, want to to this block or your mobile for example x uh, mobile to to take it from one position to other position what you would think of doing see what force you will apply you will see okay oh, i have i have applied some force the mass has moved and like you know i keep on kind of monitoring okay oh, it has it reached the final position has it reached the final position if not i apply a little more force if i apply a little more force and it has overshooted the final desired position i'll apply opposite force to bring it back okay can you see this kind of a um, Mm, common kind of a common sense kind of a, a way things will be happening in inside your head to get it to the final desired position so the question is how do you now convert this whatever you are thinking 
to get it to the final desired position inside your brain to give it some kind of a mathematical form okay so this is what is uh, uh, the the whole synthesis of control algorithm is all about this question okay so you feel okay oh look if i like look at this question or or if i am monitoring this desired uh, monitoring this um, current position how far is away from my desired position uh, i i do apply some 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 things input such that you know um, i would get go to the final desired position in some way in some way so if you see what exactly would do suppose somebody asks you okay look there is a competition and uh, you the person who takes this block from current position to desired position the fastest block possible way would get a uh, gold medal <laughs> okay so this competition is there so now uh, so now you are you are thinking now like okay suppose i do like no so so initially if the error is high i would apply like large force but if i apply large force i go fast but then i i have a danger of overshooting this so i need to apply like you know some kind of a force which is uh, again um, uh, reduced as 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 i come closer and closer so this is kind of a thinking that you would carry out in your mind okay or in in some place i may have to apply i may have to accelerate first and before i reach desired position i need to start decelerating so that i can i can control myself to kind of make sure that i don't overshoot okay this this kind of a you know things may be happening in your 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 mind about uh, when you you are participating in such a con- kind of competition so uh, the question is how do we convert this uh, you know this whatever knowledge that we develop as a common sensical thing into uh, some kind of a mathematical form so the the question is like you know what is a function f of f of uh, like you know some some function which is a function of x such that okay so this is not a function of time uh, explicitly it is a implicit function of time through x okay so uh, f should be what kind of a function of x such that we achieve the desired goal okay so pause here and like you know, propose some function okay and then like you knows we we will try to kind of see what what we can do with that kind of a function okay so this 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 function should be involving x in some way so the simplest kind of a solution one can come up with okay uh, is make sure like you know see that error as i said like you know error between current x and xd and make f to be some function of this error so we want f to be zero when error is zero so once you go to the final position we don't want to apply any force okay you will agree with me with on that right you don't want to apply any force once i am uh, i am at the final position but uh, now if i just do this okay that apply uh, f proportional to this error okay error between current position and final desired position then what would happen happen okay think about that okay will i really reach the desired position and then f will be zero there although f is zero will i stay there forever okay those kind of questions that we need to ponder over okay that's one way of thinking huh? other way of thinking is to see like you know if i put in some kind of a virtual system of uh, springs and dampers such that the equilibrium position for such a spring damper spring and damper is my final desired position okay so that is so this is another kind of a maybe philosophical or uh, maybe conceptual thinking that one can do okay so you you say okay well, if i if i put some kind of a damper and uh, so this is like a more kind of physical way of uh, looking at things that i throw in some springs and dampers uh, in a virtual way like they are not there in a practical system but uh, i am thinking of that putting them as a virtual kind of a um, elements in the system which will finally try my system to my desired goal okay so this is these are the two ways one can think about 
and in either way like you know one has to kind of uh, do the analysis to make sure that um, we 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 verify or validate that whatever we are proposing is indeed doing the job that uh, we would like finally to happen okay that is this sort of goal place a mass at a desired position okay um, so here uh, again this is like a regulation problem if we have we have discussed the regulation problem and we are not interested in path along which this mass moves okay although straight line in time it can be different paths so um, but we are kind of interested only in like you know reaching the final position so let's propose something okay um, say say we, we propose some some function uh, then we need to know how this f would work towards uh, you know getting your goal um, achieved so let's uh, propose this so so this this f that is proposed here okay this is uh, some kind of a um, error multiplied by some proportionality constant okay which you may be familiar with uh, in a proportional kind of a control action that is happening so kp times e is giving you the the final form of uh, f proposed okay and which when you use this how do you validate uh, that okay this will work or not work if you see if you put this expression into this uh, equation of dynamics okay that is going to give us uh, what is going to happen okay so i put this f into the equation of dynamics and uh, we find uh, the equations which which govern the error dynamics okay so this is a very important step that okay you find what is the equation that is governing the error dynamics once you propose some value for some function for f okay some function for con control input if it is given then what is the final um, you know error equation that you'll get is very important to kind of get to this equation now by observing this equation we can see here this is a harmonic system okay so the error there is no damping in this system so initial error suppose it is e0 okay the final error will keep on oscillating uh, between the values e0 to minus e0 okay so the error will oscillate that means like you know that your mass is going to kind of oscillate around this desired position continuously can we see that with this equation that is happening and uh, once i apply this kind of a force like the, although the force gets zero at desired position the inertia built in the system is such a way that it is kind of uh, pushing me pushing my system that the velocity is not yet zero here so then my system is getting pushed on the other side and again it will come back and again it will go back on the other side it will come back like that it is keep on oscillating around the desired position okay so how do you take care of this okay so now you can observe this equation and see okay what we want this equation desired form for this equation to be okay so we need some kind of a additional element which is a damping here so we we put uh, put that additional element in this desired form so th this is my desired form I, I would like to have then if i have would like to have this kind of a desired form what is a uh, um, hmm? control input which will give me this form or what is my f which will give me this form eventually okay so this is how uh, one has to think about uh, in the in the space of ordinary differential equations to analyze systems so i am taking this very very simple example to not let like, me get a concept across this can be extended to uh, whatever complicated dynamics that you, you are looking at okay see this is a pure kind of a differential equation kind of a form of analysis so even if you don't know what are zeros poles nothing no concepts are known you can just do this kind of a simple analysis to to get to the thing uh, in the presence especially in the presence of friction and other place other kind of nonlinearities if you do this analysis that will kind of like you know uh, give you uh, much nicer in, insights into the into what is going to happen than uh, your laplace transform or the other like linear um, forms of analysis that you might be aware about 
okay so we can use those forms also it's not a big it's not that okay we have to use this so what i'm saying is like we should be aware that whenever those forms are failing or they, they are uh, unable to give you uh, enough information especially in the presence of non entities we need to have some backup tools available to us to to do carry out uh, this analysis okay so now uh yeah you can think about this expression for f is 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 not much uh, difficult to think about uh it's just a simple mathematics if you work out and you work it out actually and then uh, see what is the form for the um if that you get you'll find that you get it is your like you know you, you well known kind of a pd control that you and that you probably had aware about uh, in in your mac uh, courses okay so this is what uh, is a main concept now like now let's we will see some kind of i'll suppose you some of the problems here and uh, then you can think about those uh, do some kind of analysis and if you have any doubts or questions about that we will we'll, we'll take up that okay so uh, you can look at this uh, this is a pd as, as i said this is a pd kind of a control feedback now uh, you know based on the beauty is like you no know, once you have this and uh, this error dynamics known you can play around with these parameters kd kp to kind of uh, see that okay error response is 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 um, controlled in a in a way you desire and uh, that that will help you tune kp and kd so as to get like whatever desired uh, response um so 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 there are so so you so you have I, as i said there are other tools that uh, that are available one can use those tools directly or one can come to come to this uh, depending upon whatever is uh, uh, easier or applicable so that's how one can look at this um okay so now let's see this other problem okay so this is the same problem of uh, but now like you no know, further rotary kind of dynamics so you have the motor so this exactly like you no know, your motor but now at this disk is added on the top of that okay and uh, we have the encoder at the back which will give you the feedback theta now our quantity to, of interest okay we want to place this disk at a desired angle our quantity of interest is theta and uh, quantity that you can dictate is is input is is torque um, you may like you no know, want to take uh, voltage also to be uh, voltage as a, as a input as well okay especially when you know now your model of the motor and uh, you are actually applying uh, this pwm duty okay which is uh, average voltage that is that is given to the motor okay from 0 to 100% okay that you are giving this uh, voltage to your motor and that can be considered as uh, as uh, input okay so when you consider that as this as input then we can take the motor dynamics part also into account and get your uh, entire model uh, ready uh, now uh, this model without friction and without motor dynamics will be uh, similar to uh, previous uh, set of equations but now i would like you to add that's your work at uh, home that you would add motor model to this without considering the the uh, inductance in the motor okay so that your equations are order of equations remain the same and uh, you can get now like you know how this voltage and theta relationships are coming up okay the dynamic equation involving voltage will be coming or you'll be getting and then um, now for such a system you dis like design now uh, what is the feedback uh, control that you would apply so that you can do this uh, desired goal of taking this mass from position 1 to position 2 finally okay so this is what uh, your standard you know control uh, problem could be Uh, so uh, now practically when you start doing that okay you will find that there is additionally the friction in the system okay 
So now the question is uh, how do you analyze whether in the presence of friction my proposed PDF control feedback will work or not. That's where now you you'll see that okay the tools of uh, this oh, error dynamics analysis okay uh, which we saw for basic concept of feedback and fundamental OD analysis equations they would come handy to you okay so I suggest that you incorporate some model of friction simple model of friction say to begin with some simple Coulomb friction model you can put okay into your equations we have seen all the models of friction so if you put just a Coulomb friction model what what would be like uh, result of uh, that so in the presence of friction can you work out uh, whether uh, my final error will be really zero or not okay you'll find that there'll be some kind of a steady state error you'll uh, you'll not be able to compensate so that steady state error will be there in the presence of pd control and that steady state error value will be some function of uh, your gain and and friction value Okay, so find out what, what that uh, function is, okay, what, what the steady state error is. And once you know uh, that, okay, well, I am like, you no, know, this, this particular control, so this is what is going to happen in practical case also, scenario. So you start uh, commanding your motor to the final desired position, but um, motor will not go to that position because of the friction. So you can say, oh, uh, you know, this based, based on the expression of the uh, error, one can get some kind of idea that, okay, if I tighten my gains further, I may be able to go to the final position. Okay, but that's about it. You will not be able to kind of make, make that zero. So uh, now you get the error uh, dynamics equation worked out and think about that, okay, for some other desired error dynamic equations, Okay, what should be to get to that? What should be the modifications in the uh, control algorithm that you are proposing? That you think about and then uh, see with if you apply that, can you compensate for friction in some way uh, or minimize the bad effects of the friction? Hmm? So this is how one can start thinking uh, when we. Uh, so see, see, for example, if in the, in the presence of friction, you will not be able to find transfer function. Then you will say, okay, well, what I can do about such a system with Laplace transform and other stuff. So that's where, like, you no, know, you'll get into a little bit of a difficulty thinking into the domain of, uh, you know, the transfer functions. So it, that's where, like, this, uh, you know, thinking purely in the ordinary differential equation domain would come very, very handy. Hmm. So think about that. Okay, and slowly we'll we'll build upon these concepts, and then there is other problem that one can think about. See, now the goal is different. Goal is to rotate disc with the desired speed. Okay, so for this now, what will be your feedback? What's going to be your model of the motor? If you use angle as a feedback, will that help for this? Uh, these are the questions you need to uh, think about, ponder over, and like you know, come up with some some kind of a design for such a so this is another different problem okay so our control input is same same voltage and desired output now is is a speed is our desired output so the then like you now what is now this new uh, variable uh, which is desired variable output what will be the uh, equation which is governing the dynamics so this dynamics now in is in terms of omega not uh, really in terms of theta so the order of equations will reduce by one okay so now with that can you develop control law which will achieve this goal can you propose some law and do the analysis uh, the error analysis now you can think over whether now you will require now that KD term is required in this case so so one can see like you know the, that this system in terms of uh, omega is going to be first order system instead of second order system and then there will be no overshoot for such a system if there is no overshoot then probably like this damping will not be required typically you need required damping to to avoid this overshoot that was happening in the previous case so like that one can start thinking about uh, doing things 
and um, getting to a, a, a control which will take us to this final desired speed uh, and now that I want that to happen in the presence of friction as well so what should I do those are kind of uh, questions that one can ponder over or like you know think about and and come to the uh, come to some kind of a uh, control expression which will uh, take you to your goal, desired goal okay and you prove that you know with, with the error analysis you are indeed going to the final position in the way that you have planned okay so like that you can consider now these different different other systems okay a couple of one or two examples and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll form up this concept in your head okay so i think maybe we'll stop here